I see you came back to the MoVC Control Cabinet Products Basic to Intermediate Training Session number four. Good job hanging in there. I know I've been giving you a lot of information, getting you oriented to this product line. It is a formidable portfolio with a lot of capabilities, and we do need to do this, but it is definitely a challenge to absorb it. What we're going to do in session four we're going to look at some of the specific capabilities of the products. We're also going to learn about nomenclature. That's that string of letters, numbers, and symbols that appear on SEW Eurodrive product nameplates and stickers. Nomenclature can be pretty mystifying if you don't know how it works, so we're going to spend some time talking about how MoVC Control Cabinet product nomenclature works and what it means so you can interpret a sticker if you see it. We're going to talk now about motors and the control modes that the MoVC Control Cabinet products offer. There are multiple ways to control motors, and a lot of it depends on the kind of motor you have and what you're trying to do with it. So here we go. First of all, be aware that the MoVC control cabinet products support just about every kind of typical industrial motor. We support all types of asynchronous motors, the most popular type of motor in industry. We don't just support SEW Eurodrive brand motors, we support pretty much anybody's asynchronous motor. If you can get the electrical data on it from its nameplate or its data sheet, you can probably make it work with a MoVC control cabinet product. We also support servo motors of various types. So if you have to do some kind of more sophisticated demanding application that has to take advantage of a servo, we can usually cover that as well. And then there are linear motors, which produce motion back and forth rather than rotary motion. What these usually are are servo motors with some extra hardware that translates the rotary motion to linear motion, but we can handle that. We can handle electric cylinders. This is an SEW electric cylinder. It's meant to replace a hydraulic or a pneumatic cylinder with an electric motor. Again, it's really a servo motor inside there with some hardware that creates that rapid back and forth motion. These are great because they eliminate the need for compressed air or pressurized oil to cause motion in a line. So that's something else we support. And this is new for us. We support servo motors that don't include encoders. For years when I've been teaching classes, one of the things I always say is if you have a servo motor, it's got to have an encoder in it because there's no way to run a servo without some kind of feedback. Well, guess what? One of the features of MoVC is the ability to run a servo motor that does not include any kind of encoder. And we are going to be selling encoderless servo motors, which of course cost less because they don't contain that encoder. There are some limitations to it. You cannot do positioning with an encoderless servo motor, but you can certainly use it in various kinds of speed and torque control applications. So we'll be talking about that. But you can see we're pretty much covering just about every imaginable motor type that you will encounter in industry with the MoVC products. To do this, to support all these motors, our VFDs contain four different motor control modes that determine how they manage the motor. We're going to just summarize these quickly. The very first is called VF mode or voltage frequency mode. Now, every single VFD on the planet has a VF mode from the most cheap VFD that you pick up in a bargain sale to the most expensive. VF is like your most basic mode. It is open loop only. It does not work with any kind of encoder or feedback. It only works with asynchronous motors, in other words, induction motors, squirrel cage motors. It's used for just basic speed control. It is not super precise, but for many applications like blowers, fans, and pumps, it's perfectly fine. The advantage is you can make just about any brand of asynchronous motor work in VF mode because it's the easy mode. 
And under the right conditions, you can even run multiple motors in parallel if they're about the same size and have the same electrical qualities. So VF mode is sort of the baseline. It's not used very much for many applications because there are better modes, but there are times it's necessary and MoVC control cabinet products do support it. This is the one though that really gets us excited. It's a brand new one that we've developed. It's called ELSM, which stands for Encoderless Synchronous Machine. I like to think of it, and it's easier for me to remember it, as encoderless servo motor, because this is an open loop servo motor control mode, and this is brand new. This is what you use with those encoderless servo motors. So it gives you basic speed control and basic torque control with a servo motor that does not have any kind of feedback device. And it does a pretty nice job. So if you need to use a servo for one of these applications, an asynchronous motor just isn't right for some reason, and you want to use a servo but you don't want to pay for an encoder, no problem. Put it in ELSM mode in the VFD and it will handle it. Now, there are a few limits here. You cannot do positioning in ELSM mode. You can just do speed and torque. You also can only use it for horizontal applications. You can't use it for angled or vertical applications, and you cannot put motors in parallel. You can just run a single motor on that VFD axis. But ELSM mode is neat. We'll be playing with it in one of the labs. Moving up the scale, we have VFC+. Plus. This is a mode that SEW developed. It stands for Voltage Flux Control, and it is really nice because it can work either open loop or closed loop. It is meant to be used with asynchronous motors, so induction motors. And if they have an encoder, it will use it and give you really good control. If they don't have an encoder, it's just an open loop motor, they'll give you really good control too. So the nice thing is you can get accurate speed control with or without feedback. You can also do torque control with VFC+, and you must have an encoder for this. You can use it for positioning with an asynchronous motor if you want. So you can do positioning applications, and it's actually pretty good positioning in VFC plus mode. So this is something SEW has developed and been developing over the years. It's a really good mode, and it's very flexible. Other brands of VFDs have things that are sort of like this, but they generally call them vector control modes. It's a similar idea, but VFC Plus is our particular form of it, and we've really perfected it. It's also good for situations where you have very dynamic operations, where you're changing speed and direction quickly and precisely. So VFC Plus is a good choice. I would say if you've got an asynchronous motor rather than VF mode, use VFC Plus. You will get better results. And then there's sort of the king of control modes, and that is CFC mode, which I mentioned earlier very briefly. It stands for Current Flux Control. Now this is a closed loop only mode. You must have some kind of encoder or resolver on the motor to use it, but it works with all the supported motors. You can use it with asynchronous motors, induction motors. You can use it with servo motors. You can use it with other kinds of synchronous motors. SEW has a whole line of motors of various types and CFC essentially supports them all. It gives you really accurate speed control, excellent torque control, and it does superb positioning. It's also good for very highly dynamic situations. My recommendation is if you have an SEW motor with an encoder on it, you probably want to use CFC mode because you will probably get the very best results. There are some exceptions where another one would be a better choice, but this is kind of the go-to for many applications. So be sure you know what you're doing, but, but this is where a lot of our engineers tend to prefer, and you can solve a lot of problems with CFC mode. So it's really good. Cannot be used with non-SEW motors because CFC mode requires electrical motor models that are stored in our VFDs. It knows our motors really well. 
Let's talk briefly about sizes and ratings, just so you have a feel for the sizes of our different VFDs. We'll start with MobiDrive technology and MobiDrive system because they are virtually identical as far as the hardware specs go. All right, we offer a three-phase version that operates between 380 and 500 volts AC. That means in the US, probably 460, 480 is the common power supply. So these require three-phase current. They come in eight different sizes, but there are several models in each size. And you can see current ranges from two amperes at the low end to 588 at the high end. We've also thrown in the calculated equivalent horsepower. This is just an approximate number, the second one here. The equivalent horsepower is roughly three quarters of a horsepower up to about 422. So that's quite a gamut of motor sizes from little motors to pretty big ones. We do sell a lower voltage three phase version 200 to 240, so that would be typically 230 to 240 in the United States. They don't go quite as big. We only have sizes two through six. They go from current ratings of seven amperes to 108 or about two to 40 horsepower. But if you have that lower three phase voltage, then that is available. I will just mention here, just so we're very clear on this, these ratings are nominal and they're based on using pulse width modulation at four kilohertz, which is the lowest frequency. Four kilohertz pulse width modulation is audible to some people. So in some settings, you have to switch the VFD to a higher frequency so it can't be heard. For example, in a quiet environment like a theater or something, you wouldn't wanna hear four kilohertz, that would annoy people. So when you do that, the drive runs a little hotter and you have to derate these numbers. But at four kilohertz, these numbers apply. And in a factory environment, of course, where it's already noisy, then that's probably fine. MoviDrive modular is somewhat different because you have the access modules and the power supplies. So they have their own sets of ratings. The power supply modules are all three phase and again, 380 to 500. So probably 460 to 480 is typical. They come in these sizes, essentially 10 kilowatts to 110. And I've supplied the approximate equivalent horsepower as well. The regenerative modules come just in a single size, but two versions they are a little smaller, but still respectable. The single axis modules range from size one to six. They handle from two amperes to 180, and the equivalent horsepower is about three quarters up to 120. So you can control a range of motors from fairly small ones to pretty good size ones. Double axis modules are a little more limited, but remember they handle two motors each. They can handle between two amperes and eight and three quarters of a horsepower up to 5.4. And you may be looking at that and saying, wait a minute, looks like there's some duplications in size one and size two. Is that a mistake? The answer is no. Size one modules are a little smaller. They're meant for applications where space is at a premium, but they don't have expansion slots in them which means you can't put expansion cards. So you sort of pay for making them more compact by making them smaller. And that's why there's an overlap with size two, because maybe you need those slots, you don't care about space. So that's why there's some overlap in size. And again, all these numbers are based on four kilohertz pulse width modulation, their nominal values. There are certain situations where you may have to derate things, like if you're working in a super hot ambient environment, for example, but these are our base readings. When in doubt, speak to an engineer, look in our catalog and everything in there is authoritative information. All right, moving on. We're going to talk now about nomenclature. That's how to interpret all the codes on a sticker of an SEW product. And as you know, if you've had experience with other companies, nomenclature can really be confusing because every company's got its own unique way of describing its products using codes. 
So I'm going to just show you briefly how to interpret the stickers on some of the MoVC control cabinet products. It's actually not too terrible. Our nomenclature for those products is fairly easy to understand. We'll start with MoviDrive technology and MoviDrive system because they have very similar nomenclatures. You'll find this in our catalog. It helps you interpret nomenclature. So this covers sort of everything. Now, not every option is possible with every product, but these codes will help you interpret it. So let's say you bump into a product and it's got an SEW sticker on it and you see all these codes and you say, what does this mean? It says, this is an MDX 98-0125-5E3-4-T01 slash CIO21A. What on earth does all that mean? Well, by using this table, you can sort of break it down and figure out what you're dealing with. So let's just start at the beginning. What does MDX mean? Well, MD means Movi Drive and X means a single axis inverter. So that means it's either a Movi Drive technology or a Movi Drive system. It can't be a modular because a modular is not a single axis inverter. So it's one or the other. So how do you know if it's a system or a technology? You jump down to the section called device variant. And if it's a system, it'll have an S there. If it's a technology, it'll have a T there. So in this case, we have a T. That tells us, bingo, it's a Movi Drive technology. We know our basic product. All right, what's next? There is a number after the T. It is 01. That is called the application level. Movi Drive technologies come in three possible application levels, and they determine what their capabilities are. So an O1 is probably your most common type. That means it's application level one. Now, if you're wondering what's the difference, we're not covering that here. I will talk about it a little later. Technology level one is good though. It lets you do a lot of fun things. So it'll either be a zero, a one, or a two. So this is a Movi Drive technology with application level one. All right, I know that was kind of out of order, but that's just the way it works. Let's go back. What's the 90 mean? The 90 says there's no built-in DC 24 volt power supply. That means you've got to supply it with 24 volts externally from some kind of supply. All right, so that's important to know, very helpful. This is a very important number, the 0125. That tells you how many amperes the device can supply. In other words, it's kind of like its capability, what kind of motor you could hook to it. Now, what SCW does is they always have an imaginary decimal point between the last two digits. So 0125 means actually 12.5. So always imagine a decimal point there, and that tells you how many amperes it is. Next, we have a number that indicates if it's meant to operate on either 200 to 240 volts or 380 to 500. Remember, they come in both types. In this case, there's a five here. So that means you could put this on a 460 to 480 power supply, which is very, very common in industrial settings. The E means there's an electromagnetic interference filter built in to the device. The three means it operates on three phase alternating current. Heads up here, we do not at this time make any single phase Movi Drive technologies or system. So these will always be three phase. Some other SEW products are single phase, but right now in the Movi C world, there are no single phase products. The four means that it works with a braking resistor. Remember that regenerative energy that can come back when the drive is still spinning under the load and it's acting like a generator and you've got to dump that energy somewhere? Well, the four says that it has what's called four quadrant operation. In other words, it can take a braking resistor and it can convert that energy into heat and throw it away. All Movi Drive technology and all Movi Drive system devices have a four here because they all have this capability. So that X that says not relevant, that doesn't apply here. It applies to some other products. There's a four there. That's what it means. You can hook a braking resistor to it. 
And then finally, the CIO 21A. What is that? It means there's an option card installed in the expansion slot, specifically the CIO 21A, which is an IO expansion card. If there are no cards, there won't be anything after this. But if there's a card there, it'll be the code of the card. So that is a full description of this product. That is what the sticker is telling you. I hope that made sense. Nomenclature can really be an adventure sometimes. Let's do another. Let's deal with a MoviDrive modular. All right, MoviDrive modular has multiple pieces, so we need to understand its nomenclature. Let's say we look at a sticker and it says MDD 90A 0020 503 X S00 CSS 21A CSS 21A. What is this thing? All right, well, let's break it down. First of all, MD means it's a Mobi drive and D means it's a double access module. Access modules are only part of MobiDrive modular setups. So this is a MobiDrive modular and this is a double access module. It supports two motors. Okay, good. We know what it, the basic thing is. The 0020, that is the rating, how many amperes per axis. Remember, it's got two axes. Remember the imaginary decimal point is always between the last two digits. That means each axis can handle a motor that could take up to two amps per motor. So that is the basic capability of the axis. The five means it operates again on 380 to 500 volts, so probably 460 to 480. So that's what this axis module wants. The three means three phase power. Again, they're all three phase devices. We have no single phase at this time. The S means it requires a Movi C controller to operate it. Now remember, think back, I told you that there is an exception where you can use a CIA 402 controller and get rid of the SCW controller and you have like some kind of a Beckhoff CIA 402 controller. Well, if you want that, this code wouldn't be S. Look on the nomenclature chart there, it would be E. And the E means that it comes with that special profile, which does not work with our controller, but does work with a CIA 402. In this case, because it's got an S, it's just a regular access module. It wants one of our controllers. By the way, I didn't point this out, but back up one. Notice there's an X there rather than a four. Access modules do not have brake resistors to deal with regenerative energy. Does that mean they can't deal with it? No, the answer is the power supply module that powers all these has the capability to connect to a brake resistor. So they all feed their regenerative energy back into the power supply and it deals with it. And it will either have a brake resistor or it will have a regenerative module that can reabsorb that energy and then reuse it. But in this case, it doesn't. So access modules do not have four quadrant operation not because they can't do it, but because the power supply does it. All right, so I hope that made sense. The 00, zero means it's a standard access module. There's an 01, which applies to just size five. And then the double CSS 21A means that the two expansion card slots in that module each have a CSS 21A option card. That is a functional safety card. It's a safe IO card. So that means we've expanded the I.O. with two functional safety cards. So that's why the double one, because there's two expansion slots in that module. If only one was populated, then one of these would not be there. Okay, you don't have to populate them both. Hope that made sense. That's a MobiDrive modular. Moving on, we will do one more nomenclature exercise and then we're done. All right, what if you see this code? MDP 90A 0100 503 4 000. What is this? Well, MD means Mobi Drive and P means power supply module. So, what this is, is the nomenclature for a Mobi Drive modular's power module. 
All Movie Drive modulars have to have that power module as part of them. And so this is the power module. This is its nomenclature. These are rated in kilowatts. This is pretty much the only Movie C control cabinet product that gets a kilowatt rather than an ampere rating. And we follow the same rule. We imagine a decimal point between the last two digits. So this is 10.0, and it's a kilowatt rating. So that means it's a 10 kilowatt power supply. It's got a five there indicating that it operates on 380 to 500, so probably it's 460, 480. By the way, we do not make a lower voltage power supply module at this time. We do not support 230, 240. We only do that with MoviDrive technology and MoviDrive system. It is three phase. We only offer them in three phase form. And that four there means that you can connect this up to a brake resistor. This is where regenerative energy gets dealt with with MoviDrive Modular. All the access modules just feed it back to the power supply. The brake resistor there turns it into heat, gets rid of it. And that is it. That's enough nomenclature. And take a deep breath. I always find nomenclature a bit fatiguing. In our next module, we'll learn about the different connectors on MoVC control cabinet products. We'll also learn how to connect them up to your PC so you can engineer them with MoviSuite. And yes, the end is coming into sight. We will be getting hands-on pretty soon, and we'll start spinning the motor. But hang on for a few more sessions. See you next time.